Welcome to the Movie Channel's exclusive coverage of this, the 65th Annual Academy Awards. Back in 1929, the first Oscar statuettes were handed out at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in front of an audience of 250. Tonight, you join an audience of over a billion people around the world. There are nearly 240 feature-length films eligible for consideration by Academy members. According to their rules, a film is only eligible if it's been publicly exhibited in a theatre in Los Angeles County during the 1992 calendar year for at least seven consecutive days. In a few minutes, we'll be going over to the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion of the Los Angeles Music Centre to find out which of those films and performances have been picked out for honours by the Academy members. But first, to sort out what governs those decisions and reflect on the potential winners and possible losers, I'm joined in the studio by Barry Michaelhenny and Jackie Stephen. Good morning. Oh, good evening to you, Mary. Um, Jackie, it's an important night, not just for the nominee, but it's a key date in the year for anyone interested in films, isn't it? Yes, it's certainly in the world, I think, the biggest event. We We've got the BAFTA Awards in this country, but nothing compares to the American version because they put so much money into it and it's hugely exciting. And it's also one of the few genuine events when nobody knows the result beforehand and we can enjoy seeing everyone's miserable face who doesn't win. <laughs> <laughs> now, exactly what governs who votes for what? Well, it, it, one of the interesting things about the Academy is, is that they compose of quite old people. Um, the average age is certainly around, uh, well, over 50. Um, and it'll be interesting to see tonight whether they go for example for Unforgiven, Clint Eastwood's film which is rumoured to be the last film he's going to direct in and star in or whether they go for something more radical such as The Crying Game. Yeah, Clint Eastwood of course, in fact um, they've said it's quite a political move that he's said that it's his last one. I think it'll certainly help because of course he's never um, even been nominated before um, and he's up tonight for three major awards plus um, six of the more minor ones um, so I, I think I have a sneaking suspicion that he may do okay. What does the rumour mill predict in terms of, uh, in terms of definite winners? Oh, I think Al Pacino is really a definite. He's up for Best Supporting Actor and Best Actor, and I think he will probably get that. Uh, it's now... We thought Emma Thompson was going to get it, now there's a lot of talk about Susan Sarandon, who didn't get it last year for Thelma and Louise. Uh, that's because it was such a boring film, but that's another matter. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm obviously, it, we all hope Emma will win. <laughs> Barry, how much of the voting said by ha hype, and how much is actually genuine reflection of a good film? We've, heard, we've had some real corkers haven't we yeah it, it certainly it doesn't um, correspond to box office returns for example because again a film such as the crying game um, is done well enough in America but took very little money over here um, and the studios obviously get behind the films and they take out these huge page advertisements and all the trade papers and and they send off video cassettes of the films and really from January onwards up until the nominations in February there is a, a massive hype for all the films um, and then of course it boils down to the five in each category well, there are 23 awards to hand out tonight, but most attention focuses on the final one, the Best Picture Oscar. Let's take a look at the five contenders. The Crying Game is the surprise film of this year's awards. An Anglo-Irish production, Neil Jordan's tale of relationships across divides, has also picked up nominations in five other categories, including Best Actor and Director. You've heard of this. Jesus, Marcus, you're walking cliché. You know, we won't leave her out of it. All those having business with this general court martial, stand forward and you shall be heard. The facts of the case. A Few Good Men has been adapted from a stage play and given a Hollywood polish with the presence of Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. Are we clear? It's a military courtroom drama with the added distinction of being the only film nominated as Best Picture this year, which didn't also earn a nomination for its director, Rob Reiner. Although it's supposed to be what Britain does best, the costume drama Howard's End is actually directed by an American, James Ivory, who with his partner Ishmael Merchant has cornered the market in adapting classic novels like this one. You have had a mistress. I forgave you. My sister has a lover. You drive her from the house. Why can you not be honest for once in your life and say to yourself, what Helen has done, I have done? <laughs> Scent of a Woman started life as an Italian film, Profuma di Donna, but in this remake the story's been moved to New York where Al Pacino, as a blind ex-army officer, terrorises his assistant and picks up an Oscar nomination for himself in the process. she alone? Yeah, she's alone. I 
things are heating up. Chestnut hair? Brown. Light brown. 22? What am I, a guy at a carnival? Day we stop looking, Charlie, is the day we die. Get the bull whip. A whipping? That's all they get after what they've done? Get out! Unforgiven is many observers' choice for the Best Picture Award. The tide seems to be running strongly in Clint Eastwood's favour. He's also nominated as Best Actor and Director in this gritty Western which has already achieved classic status. You'd be way money out of Missouri. Kill women and children. That's right. I've killed women and children. Killed just about everything that walks or crawled at one time or another. I'm here to kill you, little Bill. Clint, he's going to get it, really, isn't he? Well, I think he's got a very good chance. Um, I think he's got a good chance for Best Picture, mm. Best direct Director, possibly even Best Actor, um, because in many ways his role in Unforgiven is like a critique of the violent roles which he played in the 70s and 80s, and the idea of Clint Eastwood getting an Oscar nomination 10, 15 years ago would have been laughed at. So it's certainly good to see him um, up there getting what he deserves at last. And, and isn't the big story about the fact that he actually swore he'd never go back again anyway to the Academy Awards? He said he would never go back. He, was, he actually had to stand in one year as, as a compare um, when I think it was Charlton Heston got stuck in traffic. And um, he said to the producer at that stage, um, I'll never come back again unless I'm nominated, of which there's very little chance. So it's nice to see him back. <laughs> the point was he had to read all Charlton Heston's script and yeah, it was all to do with the Ten Commandments. He was Moses for the night. <laughs> he does look the same in every single part that he does, though, doesn't he? I mean, that film looks like every film he's ever been in. He has got that wonderfully um, craggy face. Can't um, imagine without him, him without a hat on, can you, really? No, he actually gets better as, as he ages. Billy Crystal might, might wear the hat. Who knows? That would be very interesting to see what happens. And he has done... I mean, Clint Eastwood has been doing all the interviews, hasn't he? I've seen him in so many magazines just recently. He's certainly doing a lot of press for it. I mean, they all do. They all go on the various talk shows and try and talk it up. The crying game have been all over town. Mm. So. We're talking of the crying game. I mean, the, Brit the British have done really well, haven't they? We've got, um, what, two out of five. It's not bad. Well, this is the mystery that everyone over here is talking about. Oh, the British film industry, what's happened to it? And when you consider America makes 400 a year and uh, the British have got two in the last five. It's extraordinary. So, uh, which um, British film do you think out of all, out of those ones that we've got there? Well, I think um, Howard's End, really. It has to be. It's mm. what we do best, and the mm. Americans love it every time. Well, the stars are arriving at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, so let's go over there now to find out who will be taking home those coveted awards. I'm sorry, we'll talk about um, going over to the awards. Very sad, of course, that Audrey Hepburn wasn't able to pick that up herself. Yes, because she would have been receiving the award. Um, great actress and a, a great beauty. Mm, and a humanitarian award there. Um, let's talk about the um, actress in a supporting role, an actor in a supporting role. Bit of a surprise, I think, for actress in a supporting role. We had all those four foreigners and they go for the American. I'm numb with shock, actually. Um, Marisa Tomai, it must be one of the biggest surprises for years. Um, no one tipped that. My cousin Vinny is not the sort of film that the Academy normally go for. Um, Jack Palan's got it slightly wrong, of course, because Judy Davis is actually Australian. I don't think she quite enjoyed being described as British. She looked extremely Australian. But it doesn't annoyed. augur well for, for the Brits, unfortunately. Um, mm. nor, nor does um, the fact that uh, Gene Hackman won out against Jay Davidson in Best Supporting Actor, so perhaps it's not going to be our night after all. Although this, this could be the start of the role for Unforgiven, though, couldn't it? This well, could be seen as the like, start of the role. I mean, usually the person who gets best editing gets best picture, so it looks that way. Mm. But what I find extraordinary about that role in uh, My Cousin Vinny was that uh, anyone could have played that particular role. It wasn't a particularly spectacular thing that made demands on an actress. So I found that really disappointing. I wanted Judy Davis to get it, who in Husbands and Wives was really outstanding. Yeah, I'm surprised that Miranda Richardson didn't get it because she has the three films to her credit with Damage and, and The Crying Game and Enchanted April. Um, but Marisa Tomei is an up-and-coming star and has got a new movie out called Untamed Heart, which is opening next month. 
um, which apparently is very good and uh, so perhaps this is the start of a great career but it really is a shock. I must say I, th I thought that was Miranda Richardson was going to be the name when they started off with M. Well Jack Palance seemed <laughs> to be having a little bit of trouble and he left them hanging didn't he? He's unfortunately he said, stammered after the M-I-R. <laughs> and the Oscar sure goes too and then there was like a 20 second pause and I'm sure they were um, sweating in the stalls. Well um, the, the Oscars they're now going on to the live action shorts. Kenneth Branagh of course he's got Swan Song starring uh, John Gilgood but let's go back and join Billy Crystal live at the Oscars. So let's just talk about um, the live action short disappointment for Kenneth Branagh. I know he was um, waiting up in Stratford just in case he'd won. Yes, apparently tuning in to see if he'd won. So disappointment for him um, and hopefully um, Emma will make up for it later on. Mm. And anyway, he's doing Hamlet, so he ought to be going to bed, exactly. isn't he, really? Um, controversy over the foreign film entry. Now, this, the foreign films are the only ones that actually everybody, the Academy um, people actually have to watch, isn't it? You have to sign yourself in, that's right. And the interesting thing this year is that instead of five nominations, as there are in practically every other category, there are only four. And that's because uh, the film called A Place in the World, um, which was entered on behalf of um, Argentina, was actually um, a Uruguayan film. Um, and it was discovered that this had been entered under, under the wrong nationality and was therefore um, eliminated. Um, each country's uh, own academy, if you like, nominates a film of choice and then sends it on to the Academy. It does seem very odd then that the, um, that the, uh, that the Uruguayans claimed it when it was Argentinian. It is and <laughs> therefore it leaves it with, with four films, Close to Eden, Diane's, and Shan and the strangely named Stonk. So it's hard <laughs> to pick a winner amongst those four. <laughs> but that, we'd better stress that is actually the next one coming up. Um, now Emma Thompson of course, still she, she will be um, no doubt on the phone at this moment to Kenneth saying Commiserations. No, actually she can't be on the phone, can she? Because she's going to be sitting there waiting well, for Well, unless her. she has a mobile, one never knows, but she'll probably be <laughs> commiserating him. Um, <laughs> but she looked very well in some very interesting outfits, as, of course, as always. Yeah, should we talk about the frock so far? What I find quite ironic is that at this time, all the women in Hollywood are complaining because they have to take off their clothes in films. And all of them have come in these half dresses, and their chests are just falling out of them. It's like all the mountains have decided to come to Mohammed at the same time. I've never seen anything like it. And you think, well, how can they complain about it? And especially as the Oscars are supposedly for women this year. And then, on the other hand, turn in a show like that. Mind you, Marissa Tomei was not wearing a particularly revealing dress, was she? Uh, well, no, but most of all the, the others. Jane Fonda, Gina Davis, Sophie Loren. Of course, all the designers, Armani and Versace and Valentino, this is the big night for them. They actually, you know, will send the, their designs in and try and get as many yeah. actresses as possible to and wear As Billy them. Crystal said there, that's why even Snow White looked as if she'd had so, some work done. But it was that strange breast on her head that I thought was a bit <laughs> bizarre. She obviously went that? to the worst plastic <laughs> surgeon in Hollywood. A wardrobe crisis for Snow White. <laughs> It's all about Billy Crystal. He was excellent last year, wasn't he? I, d does it, is it just me, or does he seem to be not getting quite the laughs that he was? I think it's very, it's very insider. I mean, he always does a few inside jokes. This is the fourth year he's done it. And I think only two other people have ever presented it more than three times, which is Johnny Carson and Bob Hope. So he's entering very exalted company. Um, and he actually said that he wasn't uh, sure whether he should present it for a fourth year because it's been so brilliant last year when he came out doing Anthony Hopkins. And this year, it I doesn't seem to have quite taken off, although he did the wonderful night for Oscar musical routine which went down very well so maybe he'll warm up as he goes on actually when he came in i wasn't quite sure what on earth was going on i wondered which film it was supposed I think to be a reference part of to jack palance from last year but um no some of the jokes just fly right over the head mm, um, do you, what do you think I, I think he's very funny uh, but i missed him do doing it last year and certainly compared to bafta this year it's a great improvement but i, I think audiences are difficult things there was everyone complained this year nobody applauded loud enough at BAFTA and also we're used to seeing things where there's so much applause added afterwards mm. that I think when we see something for real we tend to be taken <laughs> aback at the Funny silence of applause. I think the highlight of course is coming soon. Sharon Stone is going to be presenting an award. Something yes. you're looking forward to Barry? I am looking forward to it as I'm sure a lot of people are. Um, she's got a new movie coming out called mm. Sliver and uh, she looks great so mm. we're interested to see what she has to say. Well, let's go back to Los Angeles now. Just to recap, the first award of the evening went to the first-time nominee, Marissa Tomei, for her role in My Cousin Vinny. Less surprising was a win for Gene Hackman as Best Supporting Actor in Unforgiven. You know, how, how you, you feel about awards in general, if you're nominated and you, you show up and you're, you're there, you still have the nerves that go along with it. I, 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 you know, I wouldn't show up if I didn't uh, feel strongly about it, uh, one way or another. What, the shame of it is that, that people like uh, a Jay Davidson and uh, a David 
uh, Pamer, uh, excuse me, David Pamer and, and Al and, and Jack and everybody else can't win at the same time. Uh, that's, that's, uh, most actors feel that way. They hate to be pitted against one, one another. Well, as those happy winners stumble off stage clutching their awards, they might not realise exactly what they've been let in for. Instead of going straight back to their seats, they have to go to work and meet the press. They're taken off stage by an escort and taken up to the fourth floor of the music centre and they start going through a gauntlet of press. Their first stop is a deadline press room. The escort then takes them into the next room, which is our general photo room, and that is filled with a roughly 90 uh, photographers from around the world. We call it the animal room because the people are screaming and yelling, the strobes are flashing, and those photographers, in order to get a reaction from the winners, yell out everything except profanity. The next room is our print and radio room. It's split up. It's two-thirds of working press people, reporters from around the world, from the major newspapers and magazines and the wire services, and radio what was I talking about when I said number one? Sometimes a winner will try to buck the system, as Anthony Hopkins did last year. In the middle of all the excitement, he wanted to make a phone call back home to his mother in Wales to let her know the big news. I'm not very uninhibited, and I don't... Then they go into a television room. We put roughly 125 on-air people sitting in chairs in that room asking questions of the winner. Directing has more to do with my real personality and who I am. And even that's not the end of it. Around the corner are the massed ranks of the American television shows, each one lying in wait, hoping for individual one-on-one -on -one interviews. By the time the winners finish here, an hour or more can have passed since they left the stage, and most are running out of things to say. For many, like actress Kathy Bates, it was an eye-opening ordeal. It is, because you're asking you to tell them how you feel, and you haven't even had chance to register your feelings, and it's too fast. It's just really fast and furious. But Sally Field, who's won twice, says it is actually fun. To be there for that reason, it's very exciting. So I could have gone on to four, five, six in the morning, longer even. Um, so it's, sure, it's fun. I'm joined in the studio by Barry McElhenney of Empire Magazine and Jackie Stephen of Today Newspaper. Barry, you've been backstage for a couple of the ceremonies. What's it like? I was there in 1990 and 1991, um, and it's one of the few things I've ever been to which not only lives up to your expectations but actually surpasses them. Absolutely amazing from 4 o'clock in the afternoon when they start, um, 6 o'clock right through the whole evening. It's just um, an unforgettable experience. A bit like a bun fight. Jackie, um, Howard's End won Oscar? Yes, terrific to see a woman getting something on the practical side. There are 36 women nominated in the 12 categories and not many women on the practical side of things, so that's very encouraging. All goes mm. well for later. They yeah. do like a nice period drama over there, don't they? Well, we go now back to Los Angeles and to Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. Well, we're getting close to the announcement of the Best Actress Award, and although we may have our fingers crossed here for Emma Thompson in Howard's End, the fact that Susan Sarandon is up for Best Actress for the second year running makes her a strong contender. In the true story of Lorenzo's Oil, she and Nick Nolte play parents wholly untrained in medicine who researched and developed an oil that would ease the crippling nerve disease that threatened their son's life. But I will have nothing to do with this oil. We are not asking, doctor, for your anguish or your applause. We are asking merely for a little courage. I have it on great authority from people who have one that it is more fun to win. Um, but on the other hand, you look at all the incredible actors and actresses who have been nominated year after year and never won. Look, Mrs. Adoni. Just get out. I've read up on this disease. I know what it's done to his Lower brain. your voice. Lorenzo doesn't need to hear this from a subliterate with a double-digit IQ. Face it, lady. The lights are out and there's Just nobody get home. Just get out. Go. Well, Merry Christmas. Get out. Happy holidays. Were you Touchwood to win, would you use that audience to say something other than thank you to George Miller well, and I Nick I think Nolte? you'll just have to watch. I wouldn't be surprised if something else came out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mm, well, we will be watching out. Barry, how do you rate her chances? Well, there is a tradition in the Academy where they give out an Oscar for a body of work rather than for one particular role. And I think if they decide to do that because of all her great roles in the past, she's got a chance. But I think um, I'd still put my money on Emma Thompson. And it's look, starting to look good. It is. Howard's End and Crying Game, it's starting to come, come good. Exactly. Were you surprised at Howard's End? Either of you surprised at Howard's End? No, I thought um, it, it deserved it. And I think the Crying Game as well. And I think it's good because at the start of the evening, it looked like maybe we weren't going to get anything at all. I and thought the player may have beaten it because the player was hugely popular mm. and also very heavily American. Very in. Yes. Yeah, but Hard's End, good literary adaptation. And Neil Jordan, bit, nicest speech of the night, I think. And he looked very nicest good as well. Nicest clothes of the night, very certainly. Nice. I tell you what, it's very, it's very <laughs> interesting, isn't it? Been watching the clothes, and I, I've noticed that the, it seems to be, for women, it seems to be cleavage and uh, cleavage and cheeks, and for uh, beards for men. Beards They've all got this new cosmetic surgery now, which involves having these balls in the cheeks, and it's quite extraordinary. They all seem to have it. Which could explode mm. at any time. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that was the, um, I mean, what about the, um, the frocks now have been coming thick and fast. We've got Andy McDowell demonstrating the problem of wearing long ropes of beards, I thought. And Lisa Minnelli demonstrating the biggest pair of flares this side of 1974. Which right. is very interesting, and on various dancers as well. Absolutely. We had um, Natalie Cole wearing her red duvet. That was extraordinary. <laughs> but I mean, there's some really dowdy frocks there. I mean, that woman who came out and gave that interminably long speech in that green rag with the gold cloth round it. Bit of a fan of grunge, possibly. Uh, it's ah, possibly the modern. first time that grunge has ever made an appearance at the Academy <laughs> Awards, but why not? Catherine Deneuve buried up to her neck in um, bits of dyed ostrich. I think it had died happily. Well, Catherine Deneuve, yes, who would be very happy, of course, with Endoshin winning the best foreign film, which actually was a bit Andoshin, of a surprise. Endoshin, actually. Endoshin, sorry. Sorry, not, sorry, I, um, <laughs> sorry my, pronunci my French <laughs> pronunciation. But there had been a controversy about foreign film, as we had mentioned, and um, it was hard to pick a winner, so they'll be very happy with that. Back in France, and she'll be delighted, I'm sure. Mm. Anything else that uh, we should be looking out for you think? Well obviously Best Actress coming up quite quite soon mm -hmm. and uh, I, I would think that You're Emma still Thompson, on Emma Thompson. I'm still Who's on Emma looking Thompson. radiant? Who's looking Emma radiant? Looking, yes. looking gorgeous. Um, although Susan Sarandon um, obviously Emma Shide. Mm. She's aged there hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I was well, not going to comment we'll on leave, that. We'll leave that and we'll go back to Los Angeles. It's been quite a political year, hasn't it, really? We've heard Richard Gere talking about China and Tibet and Elizabeth Taylor about AIDS, Susan Sarandon. Um, anyway, let's look back to um, Emma Thompson, of course, best actress. As predicted. Wonderful. Yes, fantastic. Uh, what was lovely about her speech as well was the spontaneity of it. Uh, it was certainly the best speech of the night. And uh, I think she is genuinely overwhelmed mm. to be there with so many famous people. It was lovely thanking the Academy for the view, I thought. Yes. Well, so many of them take it for granted. They're used to that scene. And she was just so pleased to be there. It's a great achievement. It was nice I'm to thrilled. get it as well from Sir Anthony Hopkins, who, of course, is in the film mm. with her, and as, as was in the clip. But he presented it to her BAFTA as well. Mm. Her case style, lovely anyway. And also Tim Rice, well, he's already got a, a Grammy for his song, but uh, then yes. he's getting an Oscar, along with uh, Menken. Big man, Tim Rice. He's <laughs> <laughs> very, <laughs> very, very tall. He dwarfed it, dwarfed his, uh, his the person, the, Mr. Mr. Menken. Um, now, so far we've got, just, just to recap on the tally then, Barry, you've been keeping score. I've been keeping a little league total, and uh, Hard's End has got three, um, and Dracula, strangely enough, which was not mentioned at all really, um, has three also. Unforgiven with two, and Aladdin with two. So and the crying game with one, and the really crying game with one, and also various other. Exactly, um, but it looks as if Hard's End um, is going to perhaps trail ahead and uh, hopefully leave Unforgiven behind. Although I'm not so sure because the three big ones, of course, are still to come, and Eastwood's got a very good chance with director, a very good chance for picture, and a very good chance with actor. Mm. Both had nine nominations. Nine nominations each. Unforgiven and Howard's End. And Dracula, I think, had only four nominations and it's got three Oscars. And it's got three, three, Oscars. three of them. A costume, makeup and sound effects, which were all wonderful. Yeah, they, all well they? deserved. Great film. Mm. Yeah. Now, let's look forward to the actor, best actor in a leading role then. We've got Robert Downey Jr. for Chaplin, Clint Eastwood for Unforgiven, Al Pacino, Centre for Woman, Stephen Ray, The Crying Game, Denzel Washington, Malcolm X. Now, I'd love it. It would be great if Stephen Ray, The Crying Game, we could have best actress and actor. From, um, I think it's unlikely. It would be nice. I mean, I, if I was putting money on it, I'd go with Pacino, actually. He didn't get Best Supporting Actor. Um, he's never won an Oscar. Um, they can always give Clint director or picture to make up for it. So I think, I think it's incredibly tight. I can't remember it ever being so close as this. But if I was putting my shirt on it, I'd go with Pacino. 
What about a few putting your blouse on it? <laughs> I put my blouse on Pacino any time and a lot more. No, I think it would have to be Pacino. And he's looking extremely good uh, tonight, of course, in a beard, which we haven't seen him in before. Mm. Stumble's and, uh, gone and beards are in. Yes. yes. So maybe it'll be the year of the beard for Pacino. Definitely the case. I heard that Al Pacino actually was, um, he's, he's one of these method actors, isn't he? And I heard that... Um, that he was so into this, um, looking through his eyes but not actually seeing anything, that he actually at one stage fell over and um, almost... That's right, almost he ran right through the traffic f preparing for Scent of a Woman. I think he's lightened up a bit in recent years, but he certainly is one of these guys who comes from the, the De Niro method school of acting. Mm, so we think, it, you don't think Denzel Washington then or Robert Downey Jr., who was very good, wasn't he, in, in Chaplin? Well, I, I, I don't know about Jackie, but I actually think that the best performance was by Denzel Washington, which mm. has really not been noticed that much, and Malcolm mm. X has only had a couple of nominations, but I think the one person on the screen who actually makes the character come alive more than any other was Denzel Washington as Malcolm I, I don't X. think just, they're going to give best actor to a political film. Really? Mm. I, I think just very quickly, director, you reckon uh, both going for Clint Eastwood? Eastwood. Eastwood. Well, we shall find out in a moment as we go back to Los Angeles. So you missed out on Best Actor, but thank goodness he got Best Director. Yeah, and it's amazing, isn't it, that um, Pacino and Eastwood never won an Oscar before, both get it tonight. Eastwood's never fantastic. been nominated either. No, never been nominated. Mm, it's lovely there. I mean, it's quite right that he actually thanked, um, partly thanked Britain and France, because they've just recently had major retrospectives of his work. Well, the French critics picked up on him even in the Dirty Harry days, when, critically, he was regarded as a bit of a pariah. Mm. Um, so, neck and neck with one to go. That's right, Unforgiven and Howard's End, now both, uh, both with three, and we've got the final big one, the yeah. best picture. Well, it's interesting that nothing seems to have run away with it this year. Mm. Some years you get seven or eight awards to one film, and this year, well, the most is going to be four. Mm. Which I with think Unforgiving is having and forgiven having best editing and best director I would think the chances are that's going to I think it's got to be favourite yeah mm. but I think it's a fair representative of, of, of the year it's been where there hasn't been one film that's really captured people's imagination I mean it's disappointing with the crying game unless of course it gets best picture but I think that that's starting to look unlikely uh, there's a, a few good men we haven't actually mentioned uh, also up for best picture yeah, A Few Good Men, which has had a few nominations, um, but... Nominations which, only. Yeah, which I, and I think it'll stay as nominations only. I think it was one of those films which um, captured the American public's imagination, but which didn't transfer that well. Certainly didn't transfer that well in Britain, didn't do as well as a film, say, like The Bodyguard, which um, had the song nominations, but no others. Mm. Well, you'd have put your blouse on uh, Al Pacino winning, and luckily you got your blouse back again. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, that wasn't uh, not much of a, a surprise then for both of you. You both chose Al Pacino. We, they both picked him in a good speech. It's for a body of work, I think, probably. Mm. Uh, I have always been amazed he hasn't got it for the Godfather films, which he has been nominated for. Uh, but well-deserved. It is mm. starting to chip away at that list of great Hollywood icons who have not received awards, Steven Spielberg and people like that. Eastwood. And Barbara Streisand, in fact, has been, has been snubbed in the past for and directing, giving Best Director. Who very pointedly presented Best Director yeah. tonight, um, but who last year, of course, when Prince of Tides was nominated for practically everything, didn't get um, the, the director nomination. There's always one film that they say directs itself, and this mm. year's A Few Good Men, because Rob Reiner isn't in for Best Director. We've got Robert Altman taking his place instead. Mm. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with Best Picture, but I don't think A Few Good Men will be there. I think it's between Unforgiven and Hard's End at this stage, based on what's happened so far. Mm. Actually, considering it's women in film which are, who are to be honoured at the moment, there seems to have been, have been an awful lot of other side issues. Barbara Streisand, yes. mind you, did actually mention uh, um, the fact that she was hoping that there would come a time when it wouldn't be best, you know, particularly important whether it was a woman or a man mm. winning anything. Well, I think that was significant about her bringing that up then because, of course, she was snubbed with Yentl as well mm. uh, several years ago. And it, although, yes, it's women in film, there aren't that many women who have received awards tonight. Even though when we saw that little, um, the, the little clip of all the films that have been written by women or directed by film, it was, um, it was incredible, wasn't it? Some of the best films ever made. There's supposedly going to be a big fuss tonight from a group called WAC, Women Activist Coalition, who were going around town painting this Oscarella graffiti as opposed to Oscar and saying there should be a much more women's mm. feminist approach to it, but it hasn't really happened tonight. And now we go back for the best picture to Los Angeles. And we were all sitting there watching Clint Eastwood there picking up best film of uh, 1993. Incredible. Um, he was shaking, wasn't he? He was shaking. He was shaking like a leaf. Um, good performance by Unforgiven, but I think the only real surprise, looking back on it all, was Marisa Tomei 
I think everything else you could you could have mm. predicted really, and it's disappointing the crying game didn't get more. But um, for Unforgiven to get director, picture, supporting actor, and editing is fairly impressive, although not a runaway like previous years. Yeah, mm. I think it's it's much more enjoyable to watch. I think when it's spread out over a number of films, and uh, marvelous news, most marvelous news of the night, Emma Thompson. Mm. Mm. Emma Thompson, of course, getting best actress for her part in um, Howard's End, best actress in a leading role. I feel as though I've taken some sort of drug. <laughs> I'm, you know, like cocaine or something like that. I'm just kind of... I'm like that. I just explained it, but my adrenals are going... Like that. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Um, just to recap then, uh, Best Actress in a Supporting Role, you've mentioned Marisa Tomei. That was, uh, you were saying, uh, that, that was, that was the surprise, shot, my think. cousin Vinny. Actor in a Supporting Role, Jean Hackman in Unforgiven. Best Actress, of course, we've just seen, saying that she felt like she'd taken coke. Best Actor in a Leading Role, Al Pacino, Scent of a Woman. Best Director, Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven. And Best Picture, Unforgiven, Clint Eastwood again. Not bad when everyone thought you were dead, is it? That's <laughs> amazing. If it is his last film, um, then what a wonderful way to go out and what a wonderful testament to 39 years in the business. Mm. And Jackie, what we remember from the uh, 65th Annual Academy Awards? Well, I think it's just lovely to see the, the British films do so well when things have been on such a downer here for such a long time. Jackie Seaman, Barry McElhenney, thank you both very much. Thank you. And that's it from us. Channel's presentation of the 65th Annual Academy Awards was sponsored by United Cinemas International.